Hello, welcome back to Bender Sushi Live Coding. In this episode, I'm going to share with you this uh, setup that I did using Spreadshop add-on in Blender. Um, so the idea is to create some kind of a procedural jigsaw puzzle. So I'm still kind of exploring uh, the idea. So, but this is the basic, I think, and I think it's quite interesting uh, to study. So what I got here is uh, the ability to generate unlimited big jigsaw puzzle. Like uh, if you're like uh, my auntie, she loves jigsaw puzzle and she can make like 3,000, 5,000 or even like 10,000. She can put 10,000 jigsaw puzzle together uh, like for a few months or less. So yeah, uh, I think we can do like um, the setup using Spreadshop. And this is one of the setup. This is actually more a little bit more abstract than the normal jigsaw puzzle because the normal one might not have uh, all kind of random shapes like this. It's more like a, a range, you know. Uh, normally they they are shaped a little bit more like uh, if we have like a square, and then you, this guy is probably a little bit more like that, and this one is like that, and sometimes you get that, and maybe like that. I don't know, but uh, it's like uh, interlocking. So the idea here is really uh, what I did in Spreadshop is that if we have some kind of grid, we know that we can easily replace the edges, replace every edges with a uh, with something like this, whether it is like going um, going like that or it's going like down like that, in or out. So we have two. Um, alternative so by alternating this and that and using adaptive edges uh, we're gonna get like a, some kind of jigsaw puzzle so that's the idea I what I start with is this uh, this guy right here I'll give it a different color okay so this guy was not was originally more like um, simplified a little bit like this. Um, we actually made a mistake there. This should be. This should be two. Okay, so it's like I made this um, simply by using a single input uh, node. So this list input node can generate as many as as many points as you want, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, six points and the first one of course zero 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 over here at the beginning and the second one is one zero zero this is the second one and then the next one so on and so on you can kind of practice this uh, pretty easily and then once you have all the points you can join them together using UV connections so that's uh, simple enough you, you're gonna get this uh, design and this is pretty um, accurate if you want, if you like to type in the number, so this is all the number manually type. You can generate this, of course, using a procedural mean as well, but I'm just gonna do it manually for now. So that's the part for the jigsaw puzzle. And then what I did next is simply pipe in this guy into matrix apply, and here the matrix apply will do some kind of a um, like a magic, uh, basically simply rotating the, rotating this guy like up, either is up or down. In uh, so it's a uh, zero or one hundred eighty degree, in uh, in the x axis one zero zero. So that's what I did here, and then I'm using list item, and here I'm using random number generator. So this can be uh, not random; it can be more like a uh, just zero one zero one pattern. Uh, if you want to, uh, like, um, kind of more like a normal pattern for jigsaw puzzle, maybe. But I found the random is also quite interesting. So piping all that into this uh, adaptive edges will give you the jigsaw that you need. Basically, um, so I have plain, plain nodes here generating um, the grid, and then just simply piping all this down and we get that jigsaw puzzle. It's very nice, I think very nice setup, and it's actually very, very simple. 
and yeah if you don't like this uh, square is jigsaw puzzle you can always change it so you can all uh, kind of tweak this guy maybe a little bit smaller 1.5 so it's a good idea to actually kind of note which one does what so that's kind of for the vertical part this is for that guy there must be one more number that we need to adjust okay maybe this guy so I, apparently these three have the effects on our jigsaw puzzle so that's something to keep in mind that means the so if you see this three number you can basically tweak this guy like maybe push this a little bit in and this guy a little bit in also I'm just gonna do it by eyes it's probably not the most accurate so that's the typical jigsaw puzzle that you might see uh, some uh, toy actually use this kind of idea to kind of make like a 3d of some sort like a 3d um, objects where each faces is actually turned into this kind of shape so you can put them all uh, back together a little bit more tricky but could be interesting you know you might have seen it somewhere I maybe I should find it they call it like a 3d jigsaw puzzle you end up with something like a uh, Eiffel Tower or the globe the globe one is actually very cool I play with this 3d jigsaw puzzle like a small one uh, at some point anyhow this is what we got now and so this is the element this is the the base and you can randomize the this uh, jigsaw puzzle so here maybe I don't like this guy too close like that maybe I did something wrong here it's not like totally wrong but tidy things up a little bit so there's like correlations between these three uh, like uh, six numbers very important and this guy, for, for example, needs to be a little bit uh, to the left, maybe. Something like, something like that. Okay, not too bad. Now, when we are done with this, and if we just uh, simply bake it, we should get our puzzle and this guy if we go uh, inside there there might be already joined together but not yet correct you see they are still like separated so if we want we can even like smooth it but before we do that maybe go inside and select all the points and remove doubles it's guaranteed they are now all touching together and then fill the hole so we get this one that's actually fail not sure why fill hole it works Oh, there's probably like extra edges there somewhere. Probably need some kind of cleanup. So, anyhow, you get the idea. This guy, we can probably subdivide them somewhat. So, not like that. Here, there must be like one, like a big face that's uh, not good here, you see? There's a big face. Delete it. Only face. Now we are end up with a, a better result. This one also wrong. So that's correct. Uh, but there it's like it's flipped. So there's like um probably extra works if you want this to work. Um, as a proper jigsaw puzzle maybe somewhere 
here after adaptive edges we can remove doubles and try to fill hole for these guys um, each of these shapes will be like a separate um, if you want this to be like a proper jigsaw puzzle you probably want to separate every face like uh, maybe using there's a polygon boom and it will separate all the polygon face once again and once you do that you can you know you can always just extrude them up so extrude separate face a little bit flip there so that's probably like a just like a little bit of glitch but you get the idea this is you're gonna end up with a jigsaw puzzle if you if the the element you made it like kind of like a more rounded like a normal jigsaw puzzle then you're gonna get a better looking jigsaw puzzle sort of that's the idea so yeah anyway that's uh that's pretty much it for this live coding thanks again for tuning in hopefully you find this useful and interesting and uh, let me know what you think i'll see you in the next video thank you bye